Okay, so 52 Pi have sent me some great Raspberry Pi 4 cases in the past, like my NAS case. Uh, they've also sent me this low profile ice tower cooler for the Orange Pi 5. But uh, I've now got some cases and an ice tower cooler for the Raspberry Pi 5. So up until now, I've been using this Raspberry Pi 4 case with a 5 volt fan, but using it on 3 volt, so it stays on all the time. Um, but it's pretty quiet and, and it serves its purpose. I'm absolutely fine with it. But uh, I'm definitely looking forward to trying the Ice Tower cooler um, because that gives much better cooling than just a fan blowing down. Uh, you know, to have this extra size cooler is excellent. And here it is, same sort of style. And uh, this part is the part that's going to go onto the CPU. And then we've got the fan. And in this case, we've got the proper fan connector. So the Raspberry Pi 5 has a dedicated fan connector, which is here on the Pi 5. But I think first of all, I'm gonna try the case. Cause I still only have one Pi 5. I've got another Pi 5, four gig and eight gig on order. And also the official power adapter, cause I'm still using the Pi 4 power adapter. So let's get all these bits out. So it's definitely similar to my NAS case in the way it's built. This particular NAS case for a Pi 4 has a little USB 3 adapter which joins the M.2 drive on the bottom here. And it, it is a really cool design, really, really like it. So I like the fact that they've given a couple of rubber strips for the base of it so that when it's down on the, on the surface it's not scratchy, which uh, some cases I've had in the past have been, not from 52Pi. Uh, I've also got some nice little copper heat sinks. I tend not to use these because they stick pretty hard. Uh, and uh, well this is a prototype board so I'm not I don't want to do anything to this one I may put them on uh, a future board but for this build I'm going to leave these off and just have it that it's going to be air cooling but you can see there's four of them in total to cover obviously the key component so they're covering the Ethernet transceiver the RP1 chip the new Raspberry Pi in and out controller the RAM chip and also the CPU and this is how they've got it in their documentation so it's several days later because 52Pi asked me to hold off on the video because they were out of stock at the time, but stock is back in now. Uh, and the good thing about that as well is I've received my Pi, so I've got, I've got three Pis now. So I've got my original 8 gig that the Raspberry Pi Foundation sent to me, which is in here. And I've got an 8 gig here with the official cooler on it, and I've also got a 4 gig Pi 5 as well. So let's take this one apart and put it in this case. It has served me well, but this is going to be a better solution, especially with the PWM controlled fan. So basically the, the fan is temperature controlled now. Whereas before I just had it as always on. And I'm going to put a little bit of Tipex on this one just to remind me that it was the original. Because I've actually found already that this doesn't overclock as well as this one does, but I'll do that in a later video. So I've got some nuts and bolts here to attach the fan to the lid. Okay, so that's all four on. And we've got these little standoffs which sandwich together on here. And four little sunk screws in the bottom here. And the rubber strips go on, but I'm gonna just cut four bits uh, because I don't wanna block the screw holes in case I need to take the pie out of the case. There you go, so I've still got access to the screw holes and it still feels nice and solid. And the fan's gonna be difficult because it's all the way down there. If you haven't got tweezers, it's probably worth taking that out beforehand. Let's pop that in. There's only one way it can go in. So that's the new fan connector connected as well. So we still got very good access to the SD card slot at the back here. And also the PCI Express slot is available because that'll be a little ribbon cable that'll come out of there and the power button, so they've left loads of room for that. Uh, these are nice and flush, and everything's lining up perfectly. And I've noticed around the top, there's space for GPIO cables to go in, and also any ribbon cables you need, which is nice. The fan is on, but it is super quiet. Now on early builds of Raspberry Pi OS, I'm sure there was a separate bit in Raspberry Pi config, uh, which was to do with the fan, so let's have a look. So nothing in system, interfaces, yeah, there's nothing there. Uh, I thought there was something before, um, but there doesn't seem to be anything to do with the fan. So let's have a look at the official documentation. 
So the pin connector has four pins. Official accessories are managed by Raspberry Pi firmware. At 60 degrees, the fan will be turned on at 67.5 fan speed increases. So let's have a look. Have I got P-Sensor already installed? I haven't. So let's install that. So control Alt t to open the terminal. sudo apt install p-sensor. And yes. And we can close that down. Press the Windows key and start typing p-sensor. And we can launch that. So let's see what it says it is at the moment. So it's currently 58, 57 degrees. And it is spinning. Uh, and you can see it's even got the RPM that it's spinning at. Okay, so I've left it on and played around with it a little while, uh, and you can see it went up to 74 degrees. So the maximum RPM it got to was 4,395. Let's see if we can go higher than that. So let's just do sudo apt install handbrake, because this is one for massively getting the temperature up. And I want to test this with overclocking, not in this video, um, but handbrake is great for overclocking uh, and I need to find on my NAS drive uh, I've got a little GoPro video that I always use so it must be in videos and yeah test let's copy that to the desktop and see how high this lets it go so handbrake and let's open up that file on the desktop Test and let's just save it as anything really. So general, we'll save it as let's save it as a 4K file. See what it does. So let's hit start and then watch this down here. 60 degrees already. 64. In fact, if we put H top on and let's just customize this a little bit. So F2. And we can do CPU frequency, CPU temperature. So it's running at 2.4 gigahertz at the moment. What have we got the temperature? It still hasn't got to that 74 degrees it got to before. That's getting a little bit hotter. Still got a fair way to go to so 75. But one of these temperatures is obviously uh, going to ramp up. Oh, the fan's going up a little bit now. Yeah, I can hear the fan now. So 4,300. 4,500. So that's the fastest the fan has been so far. And obviously if I put those heat sinks on, that could have made a bit of a difference. But as I say, I don't really like sticking heat sinks on directly onto the CPU. Uh, just because I try out lots of cases and various different things. So I have to end up pulling them off and some of them stick on quite hard. So when I do the edit, I'll be able to work out how long it took. And should we try it without the fan, just as a little comparison? Okay, that's all done now, so I can use that as my little edit cut, so I know uh, where to compare it to. So I've taken out the four screws, and I've removed the fan connection. So now we are, well, we've got no cooling. So let's see what happens with that. So let's get all the same stuff running. Put this back to as it was, uh, and then we want handbrake. And then open that file on the desktop again and we did it as general and 4k HEVC and I need to do oh it's already calling it test one so that's all right it's not going to overwrite it and let's hit start and see how long that takes and also look at the temperature it's already at 73 degrees 77 so it's already gone higher than it went before so oh, my drive says it's at 98 degrees 80 degrees so it should start the thermal throttle now it's a uh, maximum has been 84 degrees currently at 80 degrees so it's very hot now 85 degrees so it'll be keeping it from going any higher than 86 by thermal throttling but i was hoping that htop would show the frequency that it was using but it doesn't look like it does that okay so that's just finished now and the maximum temperature was 86 and now we'll start to see that temperature start dropping quite quickly even though there is no fan it will start dropping um, but it will hold at a higher temperature than the fan would obviously okay so you can see from that test how a fan is definitely beneficial so no fan it took 7 minutes 54 44 to do that video encode and with the fan it was 6 minutes 47 
So it was actually over a minute quicker to do that one task, which is about a minute of 1080 video. But the one I'm really interested in is the Ice Tower Cooler, because I love these. They are just a really nice big heat sink. So that's pulling it away from the pie. And that means that the fan needs to cut in a lot less. Plus it's got some cool LEDs on it by the look of it. So this also comes with a load of screws and some thermal pads. These thermal pads um, aren't very sticky. They're, they're meant to be sort of sandwiched in between. So I don't mind putting these on. And they're talking about one going on the CPU. So let's pop that on there. Funny shaped CPU because it's got like a ridge to it. And pull the protective cover off. Otherwise that's not going to be very effective at all. So we need to screw these mounts into the heatsink. Then we have some of these to mount it with. So they screw on there. So these space it away from the board. So this is the right height for the CPU. So you can see that sat on top of the CPU here. Then we've got four of these to go into here. And then we have this clear perspex, which uh, has a little cover on it, which I can pull off. And then that mounts this way with four screws on the bottom. And unfortunately there isn't any rubber pads to go on the bottom. So it would be sat on these screw heads, which obviously isn't good for a lot of surfaces. Luckily I've got a load of these, uh, which I can use. There we go. That's those four on. No more scratchy desk. And you can see I've got another one of these fan connectors. So let's pop that in place. There we go. All done. Let's get it plugged in. And the fan is lit up, but it's not on yet, or it's not spinning around yet. Uh, so let's get P sensor on. So the temperature is uh, 29 degrees at the moment. Very cool. Okay, so let's run the same test again. I expect it to be the same as the case, because if it's adequately cooled, it doesn't need to thermal throttle. But we'll have a look and see what it does. Okay, so that's all finished. And as you can see from the fan at the bottom, the 1017 RPM is the highest it got to because it only got to 52 degrees and it's currently running at 42 degrees. Very impressive. So now we need to check the edit and see how long it took. Okay, so comparing the results with the fan and the ice fan, as you can see from this test, it was incredibly close and not really, didn't make any difference. Where it would start to make a difference definitely is with overclocking. Because the ice fan stays a lot cooler in general, max temp in centigrade, no fan 82 degrees, with fan 75 degrees, and the ice fan only got to 52 degrees. So we've got loads of room to overclock. And when we start to overclock to say three gigahertz, then we're gonna to start to see that video encoding becoming a lot quicker. But I'll do that in different videos. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.